Hi, I'm Pastor Willie Vaughn with Out of the Box Ministries, and I want to thank you for joining me today as together we unlock biblical wisdom for life on how to live the Christian life. As always, I hope and pray that this message encourages you, inspires you, but also challenges you in your faith and equips you to live a deeper, more meaningful life. Today, we're going to go through a rough passage of Scripture, one that most Christians kind of cringe at. It's in James chapter 1 as we talk about rejoicing in our sufferings. So if you want to read along in your own Bible, again, we're turning and we'll start with James chapter 1. But before I begin, I want to give a shout out. Sonia, welcome to the Out of the Box Ministry family. God bless you. I hope this ministry blesses you. I hope you're staying warm. And thanks again for the coffee and cookies the other day. So let's get right into it by reading from the book of James. James that is the brother of Jesus, most historians believe. And he was ended up being a leader in the church later on, though he probably didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God during his ministry. So in James chapter 1, verse 2 through 18, it says this, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all that He created. Now, if you study and you go to classes like I've done for the ministry, they tell you don't read long passages of Scripture because it puts people to sleep. So I hope you're still with me. But as I've been reading and studying the Bible lately, I said, you know what? Sometimes we just need a snack of God's Word. And sometimes God can really just feed our souls and our spirits with one verse. But often, as we read the Bible, we realize that it all is knit together. James is writing this, and it's all valuable into this. We could boil it down to that one verse, consider it pure joy, or rejoice in your trials when you face trials of many kinds. And yet, all of the other stuff seems to be half, you know, haphazard. Seems to be like, James, you got ADD, you're talking about six different things. Yet if you study it, we realize that it's all coming together, that he's not just bouncing around, that it's all woven together in the theme. And so I wanted to have this whole passage of scripture for us as we go through it. Of course, this idea of suffering kind of reminds us of, you know, country music. Country music seems, at least in the 90s, was all about, you know, loss and stuff. And you know what the joke they used to have was, you know, you, you know what happens when you listen to a country song backwards? You get your house back, your dog back, your wife back, your car back. 
So in that theme, to really understand how in the Christian life God is asking us to rejoice in our sufferings, I want to go back through this passage and read it backwards so that we can understand what God is saying. God's not saying, hey, you know what, just deal with it. But God's giving us an understanding. And the reality is, I think a lot of people have different ministries. Everybody knows Joel Osteen, and he's got those feel-good messages. And I call him a Christian motivational speaker. And sometimes I like to go into this idea of how we handle suffering. Because the reality is, if you've lived life for longer than five minutes, you've gone through some challenges. You've gone through some tough times. And God's Word is a word of reality. So today, if you're looking for just that feel-good moment of inspiration, you may want to stop watching. But if you want something you can really live by to help you through life and to live Christian life in the real world, that's what we're going to talk about. So let's start with going to the end of this passage with the idea that suffering is a gift. This was what really grabbed my attention. James is talking about suffering and all these different things. And then in verse 16, he says, Don't be deceived. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. And I love that idea. God does not change like shifting shadows. It's not like God had a bad day, so he wanted to just take out his frustration and beat you over the head, okay? God does not change. And in this idea of suffering, sometimes suffering can be a gift. Yeah, I'll say that again, and sometimes it's a hard pill to swallow, but suffering can be a gift, you know, and we, we can gain. And so when we look at suffering as having meaning and purpose, we can get something out of it. 2 Corinthians 4.17 says this, that our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. See, God uses suffering sometimes to bring about something greater. In fact, Viktor Frankl, an Austrian psychiatrist, said this, In some ways, suffering ceases to be suffering in the moment it finds meaning. When we start to see a meaning and a purpose in our suffering, we can gain something out of it. There's a blessing to it. And God isn't wasting. God doesn't waste a single tear. The Bible even tells us that God is so loving that He catches every one of our tears and stores them and collects them. God is there in the midst of your suffering. If you study the book of Job, you see he went through a lot of pain and yet God brought something about with it. In Romans 8, 28, it says, God works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. God is allowing suffering into our lives sometimes, but never meaningless. Without God, without this understanding of this hope of a God who loves us, suffering has no point and no purpose and it's something we should purely avoid at all costs. And yet, the Bible says for us to rejoice in our suffering because we know God is doing something with it. Suffering can be a gift when we look for the meaning and purpose behind it. And God wants to do something in this time if we're willing to allow God to do something. So looking for the meaning and purpose, God, what are you trying to accomplish in me? You've let this happen, but you didn't let it happen just to punish me, just to you know, beat me up. You're trying to do something. And there's a meaning and a purpose in it. Now, of course, we tend to, people in the world say everything happens for a reason. That's not really biblical. Sometimes bad things happen because you and I make bad choices. Okay, that's just the reality. It's not that things happen for a reason. God had a huge reason sometimes, and sometimes things happen. And yet God can use those things. Use those things. Use even our challenges and difficulties to bring about a blessing. So sometimes suffering is a gift. And that's why we can rejoice in our trials, rejoice in our sufferings. We know God's not going to waste it. Whatever it is you're going through, whatever it is you went through, it can be a gift if you're willing to let God use it and to submit to Him. And also we have to go through then, as we work backwards through this passage, in verse 13 through 15, we're told that God does not tempt. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. 
And so God is not tempting. And a lot of times, this is a huge lie we have in our world. Oh, God made me this way. Or I'm, I'm tempted or prone to this type of sin because that's what God made. God is not tempting you. And yet, there is a testing that we can go through. God allows certain temptations to happen. In Matthew 4, 1, it says Jesus himself was led into the desert by the Holy Spirit to then be tempted by the devil. And we're coming up on, on Lent, which is a celebration and remembering the 40 days that Jesus was in the desert, tempted before he began. So God allowed his testing. God wasn't testing Jesus. God wasn't tempting him. But God put him in a place. The Holy Spirit led him to a place that he was allowed to be tempted, to be tested. God allows us to experience testing. In 1 Timothy, it talks about leaders in the church. And don't just have these people jump into leadership. They first must be tested. And so even in our lives, sometimes that gift that God is giving us is allowing us to go through a difficult time. Every time we suffer, it's a test. Are we going to cling to God in the midst of it? Are we going to continue to follow his ways and his precepts and his commands? Or are we going to look for whatever we have to do to avoid it? Are we going to let go of our integrity or our character and just try to get out of the pain? See, that's the difference between living a life for God and living a life as a Christian and living a life in this world. Even as a Christian, we see there's meaning in it and there's a, a purpose in it and we go through these tests as an opportunity to reveal our own character not so much to God because he already knows what's in us but to ourselves and to the world to the world that's looking it says do you really believe that God is with you in the midst of this that God can do something through this and so we get not God is not tempting us but he is testing us he's allowing us to go through a test and often it's through those testings that we prove our character that allows us and gives us the opportunity to come to a higher level a higher level Jesus had his testing and had to go through that fasting and tempting in the wilderness before he began his three years of earthly ministry and maybe you're going through something right now. Maybe you're going through some challenges and some pain and some heartache. And maybe you have that hope. You can rejoice in the trials because you know that God is allowing that temptation, allowing that testing, because when you come through it, if you come through it right, He's going to bring you to a higher level. See, that's the Christian faith and hope that we have, that God allows testing. And so while we look at the testing, we remember that God isn't just saying, okay, it happens and that's all there is to it, that there is a reward. In verse 12 of our passage, it says this, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And God wants to give rewards. Think of him as a loving father. Now, there's nothing you can do to make God love you more. God loves you with an unconditional love. For God so loved you, for God so loved the world, he loved you individually that he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for your sins and to give you entrance into heaven. See, your reward is not your salvation. Your reward is not you get to heaven someday, but God has extra rewards for you if you stand these tests of life and you hold on to your faith. And so God wants to, God is a rewarder. Hebrews, it says, anyone who comes to God must believe he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him, who seek him in their life. And so God wants to pour out rewards on you if you, if you pass these tests, if you endure the difficulties that we all go through with a godly mindset. God wants to pour out a blessing upon you. So if you're going through something, you hold on to hope and faith, knowing that your, your, blood, your suffering is not in vain, but God is bringing about a reward. And sometimes that reward is an even better character, that hope and that perseverance that builds us up and strengthens us. So there is a reward. Now, of course, one thing that has really gotten me through my difficulties in life is understanding this next part of our passage, that good or bad, your situation is temporary. And in verse 9 through 11, it says this, and this is another one of those things that kind of just seems to bounce all over the place in this passage until we put it in context. James writes, Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant, its blossom falls, and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. 
And the amazing thing about this is what I love about Jesus' instructions and the Christian life and the kingdom life is that it takes the ways of this world, the culture of this world, and flips it on its head. It flips it totally upside down. And James says, hey, if you're, you're suffering, if you're humble, if you're just barely getting by, then you should take pride in that. But if everything is going great for you, you should be humble. Because in this world, we tend to put all of our glory into wealth and success. And if I, you got the big house and you got the great job and you got the perfect family and everything is going good, obviously you're doing great. And yet, even when Jesus did the Beatitudes on the Sermon on the Mount, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the meek. These are the blessings that are in the kingdom of God because you realize your need for God. And so understand that whatever, whether you're going through a time of great success and prosperity, you could be like that flower that when the, when the sun comes up, it, the, it withers and the blossom falls. Or you're going through a difficult time. It, it's a temporary situation. In fact, in Romans 8.1, it says, Consider that your present sufferings are not even worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. Psalm 35, Psalm chapter 30, verse 5 says, Though the sorrow may last for the night, joy comes in the morning. And again, this has been one of those things that's really helped me in life. For a lot of my life, I struggled with depression. I went through periods where I was, had suicidal thoughts. And if you've ever been there, I, I feel for you, I understand. And I think the biggest difficulty for those who are in that situation is that feeling of hopelessness. Like nothing's ever going to change. I lost my brother and a good friend to suicide, and I understand that pain because I've been there. And yet this is what got me through, got me, delivered me from that, was realizing that, hey, the sorrow may last for the night, but tomorrow will come. That no matter what I'm going through, how hard it is, there is hope for tomorrow. And that's the beauty of the Christian life and the understanding that God gives us in this message. That we go through this, and it's a balance of humility and hope. That we can go through the difficult times with hope because we know that it's, it's temporary. That God's going to bring about a deliverance. And that things can get better. And humility saying, you know what, even if things are good, it's not about me. It's not about my circumstance or situation. It's about what God is doing. And the good times and the bad, whether good or bad, your situation is temporary. And that gives us the balance to walk through the Christian life in a way that honors God and shows a real conviction in the reality of life. Things change. Things can change fast. Life can change in an instant. And yet God is eternal. He's always there with us. He doesn't change like we just read in James. That He is unchanging and He's giving us good gifts. So good or bad, your situation is temporary. If you're going through a hard time, remember, it is temporary. God is going to be there with you, walk through you with it. In the midst of it, though, sometimes the biggest thing that we can do while we're suffering, while we're going through the challenges and the trials of life, is to seek wisdom. And verse 5 says this, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. And so, when in the midst of it, it's great to seek wisdom. Okay, say, hey, God, I'm hurting. To be honest with God, He knows how you feel already anyway. And say, hey, God, I want to believe that you're doing something in this. I want to believe there's meaning and purpose even in the midst of this challenge and this difficulty. Can you give me some wisdom? And there, this passage promises that God will give generously. He will speak to us. I love what Jesus said to his disciples, and I think a lot of even Christians miss out on this. Jesus told his disciples, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends because a, a master doesn't tell the servant his business. And yet Jesus wants to tell us what he's doing. He wants to speak with us and have a relationship with us as a friend. And he wants to grant us wisdom even in the midst of difficulties. If we're willing to come to him with an open mind and ask, God, can you help me? Can you help me? Can you explain to me? Now, God may not give you every single detail, and sometimes even the answers doesn't take the pain away. But God, James is telling us that God wants us to seek wisdom in our situations. It's not enough to say, yes, I know God's doing something good, and He's going to using this as a gift, but saying, God, what are you trying to do? 
And again, a lot of times what God may even be trying to do as he's letting you suffer is convincing you, you need to let go of some things that are causing pain in your life. You need to let go of the things that are hurting you. And I'm going to let you experience some pain until you let go. And so God does that. And it's the beauty of it. God wants to change you and grow you. And sometimes we hold on too tightly to the past. We hold on to the habits and the addictions that we have that brought us comfort for a while and yet are holding us back from God's best. And so he allows us to have some suffering. And so we need to ask God, God, give me wisdom on how to get through this pain that I'm experiencing. Are there things that I need to change? Or maybe God, are you doing this for a better reason? Maybe God is trying to give us an understanding of compassion. Like I said, I've gone through life. And I remember that, you know, as I lost a son to a tragic accident, that in the midst of that, I was learning compassion. I was realizing there are so many people out there who are hurting, who were invisible to me. And yet God was really, God was giving me comfort and allowing me to be a comfort to others. In the pain that I've gone through in my life, it has given me the ability to, to speak to you now. Not as someone who just say, hey, my life is a bowl of cherries and you need to rejoice in your sufferings. But say, no, wherever you've been, you know what? I've been there too. And Jesus says the same thing to us. He was tempted and tested in every way such as we are. He felt grief. He felt sorrow. He felt pain. He's been stabbed in the back. He's been cursed. He's been treated wrongly and unfairly. And so he understands what we're going through. And God loves you. And sometimes he allows us to experience a little bit of pain so we can grow in our compassion. Because often it's in the good times that uh, we tend to ignore all the pain in this world. But when we we ourselves go through pain in a godly way, according to the way God reveals to us in his scripture, we learn how to love others more deeply and more compassionately, more empathetically. So whatever God is doing, if he's trying to do something in you, if you're submitting to him, ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom so that you have the ability to cooperate with how the Holy Spirit is growing you into a stronger and better person in the midst of whatever it is you're going through. And so rejoice. Consider it pure joy, brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Of course, as I've gone through all this, I really want to drive home this point. To be a Christian is not to be a narcissist. Listen, if you can get out of misery and pain, by all means do so. It doesn't make you a better Christian if you're miserable. In fact, if you're miserable, you've missed the whole point of the message. Because we're called to rejoice even when we struggle, even when we suffer. I think far too many people don't realize that Jesus said, you will be my witnesses. Now, are you a witness of the misery of the Christian life? Or are you a witness of the joy even in the midst of pain? Of joy and hope even in the midst of difficulty? But if you can get out of it, if you can make some changes to your life, if you can let go of the addictions and the habits that are causing pain to you and others, then do so. 1 Corinthians 7.21 says, Were you slaves when you were called? Don't let it trouble you. Although if you can gain your freedom, do so. See, sometimes you're, even when Jesus comes to you, you're in a situation and it's difficult. And Jesus gives us instructions. Listen, wherever you are, stay there. But if you can get out of misery, yes! God wants you to experience freedom, freedom from pain. In fact, what the value of this passage is that we will all go through difficult times. Jesus told his disciples, in this world, I promise you, you will have troubles. You will have trials and persecutions, but fear not, I have overcome the world. And yet the Bible tells us that our lives aren't supposed to be constant pain. That in the midst of it, we go through times of struggle and pain and suffering. And then we go through times of joy and happiness. And God wants you to experience even more joy. God's kingdom is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. So experience that. But God lets these times when we do go through sufferings, this is how we handle it. Not to enjoy it, not to stay there, not to stay miserable, but to allow it to have its complete and perfect work. 
when you go through these sufferings, you can rejoice because God is doing something if we submit to him. And God often uses it, our sufferings, as a way to change us, as a way to pressure us out of the place we were in. I find myself in that position right now. You know, I've been living life and doing certain things and even living as best I can, trying to serve God and serve the world and serve the community I'm in. And yet I've gone through some troubles and some difficulties. And God is saying, now it's time to step into a new stage of life, into a new stage of ministry. And God wants me to experience greater freedom. And maybe God is doing that for you. He's trying to allow you to experience comfort so you take the next step in faith. Because sometimes we get too comfortable. But yes, don't stay in your misery. When you go through it, you can know that God has a purpose for it. Well, I pray for you. If you're going through something, reach out to me. Let me know so I can pray for you even better and encourage you. And as always, thank you for watching. I pray this message has helped you to, to deal with the reality of life. And remember, Jesus does love you. And so do I.